In the Lambda Expressions videos, I did an example similar to this one, where I make a func, uh, int bool, I'll call it test, and I will assign it a Lambda expression that tests whether i is greater than 5. I'll give the disclaimer now that in this video I expect you to be through the Lambda expressions, I expect you to understand delegates, and I expect you to understand generics in some respects. I have videos on all those, go look at the playlists for all that. Now test is a delegate, references this method, and I can certainly say, hey, let's test whether or not 3 is greater than 5, and then down here again I can say, hey, let's test again whether or not 8 is greater than 5. And hopefully uh, this is old hat to you. 3 will be our integer argument, thus int i here will be an int because the func's parameter type is an int. The return type is a bool, i greater than 5 returns a bool. We pass 3 in for i, i greater than 5, that'll be false. So this line will return, or actually print, sorry. This line will print false. And then we do the exact same thing with 8, pass 8 in for i, 8 greater than 5, that is true. So we will see true on that line. Control F5, build and run this example, and sure enough you can see false. 3 is not greater than 5, true. 8 is greater than 5. And I can go as far as just hitting F11 with a debugger and step into this. Test is now an instance of a delegate out on the heap. Again, go watch the delegates videos if necessary. Let's trace into this method. So i is now 3. 3 greater than 5, that's false. And then 8, i is now 8. 8 greater than 5, that is true. So hopefully that's all old hat in review. And I can go as far as clicking on func, hitting F12, and proving to you that yes, Funk is a delegate type. It's a generic delegate type, has two generic parameters. T is the parameter type of the method that Funk will reference. So in this case, if I say Funk int, Funk int, then I will become an int because the compiler infers that for my Lambda expression. And then the result type is the return type here, which is a Boolean. I said it explicitly there, and the compiler can see that as well from the expression here, I greater than 5. Hopefully that's a nice, gentle, but quick review on what delegates are and a little bit of lambda expressions. Now in those previous videos I actually went as far as to take this lambda expression and show you what the compiler does with it. The .NET framework, the CLR, the thing that actually executes our code, has absolutely no understanding of lambda expressions. They are purely a C-sharp construct. Let me just show you again. We write C-sharp in these nice .cs files, we generally suffix them with cs for c sharp, cs for c sharp. We run them through the c sharp compiler, csc.exe, that's the c sharp compiler, and it spits out missile, Microsoft intermediate language, which is then further compiled to actual native instructions by the just in time compiler. Uh, this is native assembly, I'll say native assembly. And this is what the, or actually native bits at that point, this is what the actual CPU in your computer executes. Well, the missile, the .NET, when I say .NET, I'm generally talking at this level. When I say C Sharp, I'm talking at this level. This C Sharp code we write and the C Sharp compiler compiles it to missile. Well, .NET has absolutely no understanding of Lambda expressions. Okay, these are purely a C-sharp thing. If you do any Visual Basic, you'll see Lambda expressions in Visual Basic, and there's some hocus-pocus with attributes and things like that that the two languages insert in order for the two languages to share uh, code that way, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. But I do want to review this, that the C-sharp compiler has to do something with this Lambda expression so that .NET can understand what's going on with it. Because there's no way for the C-sharp compiler to directly hand .NET a Lambda expression. And th there's, there's just no syntax for it in the missile level. So the C-sharp compiler grabs this. I've shown this in previous videos. And it essentially converts this Lambda expression into a method, which is exactly what a Lambda expression in this case is. So our parameter type is an i. It will be an int. So I'll say int for i. And then the return type will be bool. The method name is unknown to us. We call them... Lambda expressions or anonymous 
methods, so even though it kind of has two meanings in C-sharp, but these are anonymous. There is no name to this method. It's only known to the compiler. Only the compiler cares. Uh, the arrow here sign signifies the Lambda Expressions body, so I will replace the arrow with curlies. The return is implied. Let's go to the end, drop a semicolon. And there we go. We just did the exact same work that the compiler does when it sees a Lambda expression. And now I can take our compiler generated pseudo name here, replace the Lambda expression with that name, and execute this. Oh, I need to make it static too. I forgot about static. Control F5, execute it, and you see we get the exact same result. 3 greater than 5, that is false. 8 greater than 5, that is true. So hopefully that is all review. And 99% of the time, well, not 99% of the time, a lot of the time, the C-sharp compiler will convert your Lambda expressions into methods like this. But if you're using Lambda expressions in Link and you're talking to things like the Entity Framework is the most popular one, or you can use Link to SQL, which is kind of old, but there, and then there's other platforms and such. If, if, if you're using Lambda expressions in that context, then the compiler actually does not convert your Lambda expression to a method. Okay, don't, don't let that be a shock. To you. I know in all those other videos I said, I said the compiler converts lambda expressions to methods, which is almost true always. I, I can't say always. A lot of the time that's true, but in many cases it's actually not true. And that's what I'm going to show you in this playlist. I'm going to pick that apart and, and go on from there, but I'm going to force you to come to the next video and see exactly what I mean by that statement.